I am Charles Darwin, naturalist and geologist. In the year 1831, I set sail aboard the HMS Beagle, a modest vessel that would carry me on a voyage of discovery spanning five years, took me to distant lands across uncharted waters. Life aboard the Beagle was at times a solitary existence. I filled my hours with reading books. It was during these quiet moments that I began to piece together the patterns of life. Yet the sea is no gentle companion. Storms would often overtake us. Fishing from the deck of the Beagle was one such joy. As we rounded the southernmost tip of South America, we were near Antarctica. The cold was biting, and then we arrived at the Galapagos Islands, a cluster of volcanic lands in Ecuador. These islands, remote and untouched, were a living laboratory. These groups of islands in the Galapagos, each one is a world unto itself, with its own unique habitat. You'll find species of animals that live only on one island, perfectly adapted to its conditions, as if nature had painted each island with a different brush. This is a land of biological marvels. Barren lava fields contrast with lush highlands teeming with unique life, a living testament to nature's creativity. As I studied the finches across the Galapagos, I noticed their beaks varied from island to island, each uniquely shaped to suit the food available, a striking example of nature's adaptability. In the five weeks I spent on the Galapagos Islands, I observed that these finches, though varied in form, likely originated from a single species from the mainland. Over time, they adapted to the unique conditions of each island, their beaks evolving to exploit different food sources, a remarkable demonstration of nature's ingenuity and the power of adaptation. The theory of evolution, as I conceived it, posits that all species arise through gradual changes over generations, driven by natural selection. Traits favoring survival and reproduction become more common, shaping life's diversity. After many sleepless nights aboard the ship, reflecting on my observations, I solidified my theory of evolution. Finally, I returned to England, my mind brimming with ideas. I began writing my arguments on how species evolve, presenting evidence and giving lectures. Though many scholars criticized my work, I remained steadfast knowing that the truth of nature's processes would one day be understood. In 1859, I published On the Origin of Species, presenting my theory of evolution by natural selection, forever changing humanity's understanding of life's diversity and origins.